Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery from Microsoft Flight Simulator using free resources as always. Well, with the exception of those GIS related ones. Uh, our GIS Pro is a hundred bucks a year. It's the best value. Anyway, as I always do, I digress. Today, uh, we're going to make some roof elements. Um, I am at um, Kilo Charlie Mike Hotel, John Glenn International Airport, and I'm working on my version 3 of the airport, redoing some textures, that kind of stuff, uh, adding some buildings, making some new modifications. All right, so this is where I'm at. This is Terminal A. Okay. Um, I've made some. I've made some changes uh, going into the scenery, and with uh, with a year of experience under my belt in terms of using different things, uh, I've updated. Because if you, if you went into the, this particular terminal in the airport, it looks like somebody uh, left the water on, and my carpet was all wet because I had the wrong kind of texturing in it. Same same with the tile. The tile was really, really shiny. It kind of looked like you were in a bank and not an airport. Um, but anyway, I've, I've fixed those textures. And um, now I am working on some roof elements because before, if you notice, if you look, it's this is just a uh, low resolution image of the actual roof placed you know, textures uh, mapped to those particular polygons. But now I am adding some three-dimensional objects for those things. Uh, just earlier, just a few minutes ago, I did these, um, I did these uh, solar panels. Um, and these are just textures that I got from, I believe this one was from uh, C00, uh, uh, I think. Uh, anyway, I got a link in the description for where to get textures, but this is solar panel. Uh, the only thing that I had to do with the solar panel is, if you remember uh, a lot of videos ago, I did uh, setting up your uh, different layers in the channels for the roughness, the metallic, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think I still have this one up. So here's Krita. And um, this is the solar panel. Let me uh, bring up, let me open up the solar panel layer so you can see what it looked like. So I'm going to go to open and we're going to select the solar panel 4K color. All right. And that's going to, so here's the solar panel um, image, 4K image, all right. But I created a new image, and I opened up the roughness image, and I opened up the metallic image. And um, a lot of the, lot. Remember, a lot of the textures that you get for roughness, metallic, uh, ambient occlusion, when you bring those in, they may not be right, so you might have to map the channels correctly. So basically, I went to the roughness. I copied this layer with a uh, control A and then a control C, went into this layer, did a control V, and that created um, this layer right here. All right, and then I just right click properties. And if you remember, ambient occlusion is on the red channel, roughness is on the green channel, and metallic is on the blue channel. 
So this is the roughness, so I turned off the blue and the red, okay? And then I also brought in the metallic layer, uh, which is actually just this layer here. All right, uh, you got some not uh, the darker, the whiter, the brighter, uh, the shinier, okay? The darker, the flatter. All right, so I copied this layer with the control, control alt, control C, and then went over to this layer and did a control V and created this, and then right click properties and only turn on the blue channel, okay? And the alpha, obviously, all right? So in our new image, I have these two layers. One is the roughness, one is the metallic. And then I go ahead and export that out as a PNG. All right. So anyway, I had to do that for the solar panels. Mm -hmm. So they showed up correctly. So I got the right type, uh, the right, right shininess. Uh, if you zoom in, there's, there's some, there's a little bit of splotchiness that you see because they're not perfectly smooth everywhere or shiny everywhere. And then I just did a UV unwrap of this um, plane and then added the texture to it, okay, with the UV unwrap. I think we've talked a lot about that. So what, what else are we going to do? So there's some, there's some roof elements I want to put in, so there's some 3D. Now, on the solar panels, I didn't do all the framing and the rails and stuff that they're mounted on. Um, um, the amount of detail is totally up to you, but be, be conscious of your pilots and the drawing. All right, so I'm going to do some, I'm going to do this one air conditioner show you how I can do an air con how I do air conditioning units um, so the air conditioning unit is made up of a, a usually a galvanized or aluminum box a galvanized steel or aluminum box uh, and um, has different has seams in it raised they're usually raised panel seam type things then you got uh, a series of of fans all right exhaust fans or yeah but these are exhaust yeah these are exhaust fans and then you have an intake grill on the front all right so we are going to create this three-dimensionally so I, I want to get my 3d cursor over to a spot that is I'm going to select this vertice here and I'm going to shift S and move my 3D cursor over to there. All right. Now I want to create my air conditioning unit. So I'm going to get out of edit mode and I'm going to shift A to add a cube. And my cube is going to be hidden over here. All right. And then I'm going to G X. Is that right? X. Yeah. We're going to slide that over to here. And then G Y and move it on top of our unit there. Now, since my unit, I mean, since that new object, the origin is in the middle of mass, I need to move that up at least one foot so I'm gonna G Z one so it's sitting on top of the roof all right now we need to scale it um, well let me do a tilde T get a top view here all right and then let's move our rectangle down to somewhere close to here all right and I want to scale, and I'm going to shift Z so I don't scale it in the Z axis. All right, so we're, there's the width. All right, now I want to shift X to only scale it in the X. And there's our part of our box, right? Now we need to give it a little bit of height because these units are pretty tall. 
Um, right now it's set at two feet. First of all, I'm going to go to object and apply scale. All right. Um, this one is two feet tall right now. Okay. The length is about 22 feet by eight feet wide. Yeah, air conditioner units are on these commercial buildings are pretty big. All right, so I'm going to go into edit mode by hitting tab, and I'm going to select these top vertices. And we're going to make this uh, probably six feet tall, so I need to add four feet, so GZ4. Okay. Now I'm going to look, look at our prototype which is from the um, Franklin County Geographic Information System where they have up-to-date photos. Uh, this is about as far as I can zoom in before it clears out because it has uh, this particular site has a scale maximum scale or minimum scale for drawing aerial photos and I, I, I as a GIS director, I would have not done that. I would have made it so you can zoom in further. All right, so we're looking, and we have four fans. We're going to do that later. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven parts. And then we probably have some kind of box that sticks out at the end. So we have seven divisions. So what I'm going to do is control R for loop cut and there's two divisions, three, I'm using my scroll wheel, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I hit enter and escape so I don't move them. All right, so now I have my divisions. Uh, these two sections will have, a, will have our fans on. Now, I want to do a series. How do I want to do this? Um, oh, we're just, we're not going to make it all, uh, we're not going to make it fancy. We're just going to add some, some relief to it so it looks like there's seams. All right. And we can easily do that by, turn off this. I'm going to. Select faces, hit A to select them all. Um, got to make sure, I got to make sure scales at one. Yeah, scales at one. All right, now with all of, with all of the uh, faces selected, well, with one exception, um, I want to, I want to get rid of the bottom the bottom faces because we don't need those because nobody's going to see those and that's just less polygons that uh, the sim needs to draw there so there we go we don't have any polygons on the bottom all right so I'm going to select a to select all the faces and we are going to put individual insets by hitting I twice so we can create our insets here and now I'm going to hit the sh I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just moving it so slightly okay and then click the mouse and we have we have these units just like this all right now we're going to raise we're going to raise these panels here we're going to extrude these panels on the top all right now what I want to do and you'll get some funkiness from it okay um, there's there's different ways to do this and what I'm going to do is I am going to hit P and make the selected interior faces a new object all right I'm gonna come over here to cube and I'm gonna put a C uh, seams okay 
that is the thin lines and then for the other one these are the these are the faces I believe we'll call these we'll just call this AC all right so we have AC and AC seams now what I'm going to do is go over to I'm going to get out of edit mode select our seams go back into edit mode I want these selected and I want hold down the shift and I want this one selected I don't want the end ones I want those just like that all right now we're all right now what I'm gonna do is extrude and 0.125 which is what uh, inch and a half which is about right now what I was trying to say about well, how come those are getting selected I didn't select those sorry all right let's try this again all right let's do it the wimpy way I didn't want these end one these side ones selected so select that one all right that's good see how I make my videos longer than they really need to be but you're seeing me do it live so all right there we go and I'm gonna hit my control key and select all this stuff control key which is unselecting make sure I only have the top selected there we go all right now I'm going to extrude again 0.125 which is an inch and a half all right, so that moves that seam up like that. Okay, now we are going to do the same for these sides. Oh, I know why it's selecting the other side. Duh, because these interior panels aren't part of that object anymore. Duh, so it's going, so it's going through my, my object. Golly. So it's it's selecting what's underneath because there's actually nothing here because if I turned off AC say I got this frame so let's do it that way and I want to control click this no control click that one all right so those so I only have these selected and let me get this one selected shift click and then we are going to extrude that 0.125 so I got a seam on the side I'm not worried about this corner because uh, a lot of times that's how the seams actually are on these things because when they bend the steel there's they can't they don't bend it all there's nothing up here to bend so it kind of creates that that that's those two standing seams let me just see if I could do this kind of like this all right so this little corner here doesn't exist it's just the that's just the nature of, of bending steel I guess all right so now I'm going to select this side and now that I don't have my panels I can see what I'm selecting better all right and then we're going to select this end right here and then we're going to extrude that 0.125 as well. All right, so now we have our frame. It's not really a frame. It's steel that's that's bent and then riveted together. All right, now we can turn our panels back on just so we can see them. All right, so that creates the illusion of um, our main box of our air conditioning unit. Okay, now let's work on our fans. All right, so I'm going to select the pan. Whoop, get out of edit mode. There, get out of edit mode. Select our panels. All right, go into edit mode. Select one of these. Shift S and move our cursor to the center of that panel and then get out of edit mode. All right. 
Now we are going to, I'm going to just show you how I create fans. I'm going to add a sphere. mesh UV sphere all right and I'm gonna turn on lines just I'm gonna turn uh, get off shading mode so I can look at the size all right and go to tilde T so I can get a top and let's do a let's go back to shaded And let's turn off our AC box now and our yeah AC box all right I just wanted to see the size the default size is is two feet and that's pretty darn close all right so with the top view I'm gonna G Y and move that sphere up to this spot so with the default size of two uh, matches the real world size so that's pretty cool. All right, then I'm gonna hit period to focus in, and then we are going to, we need to turn our panels back on. All right, we're gonna go into edit mode of the sphere, and we are going to scale this in the Z direction, so that's S, Z, and we're gonna smoosh it. We're smooshing. You got that? We're smushing. Okay, I'm gonna go into uh, x-ray mode here. We're gonna get a uh, good side on, so I'm gonna go tilde A. Um, how'd that, how did that rotate me? Oh, wrong side. That's tilde A, that's tilde, tilde F, there we go tilde F for the front view all right so now I only want the top part so I'm going to select these bottom faces and we're just gonna delete those faces just so I have that bell there just like that all right now we want to create a couple things so I am going to hit tab and with that selected period Go to sphere and call this uh, fan great okay and then I'm going to go into edit mode go to edge select alt select uh, the ring on the bottom and we are going to shift D escape to make a copy and don't move it hit P and make that a new selection and make this um, fan, let's call this hole, all right? This is going to be dark. It's going to look like there's a hole, okay? Then I also want to I need to make my fan blades. Well, there, I'm going to do the blades different. So um, let's go back. Uh, let's select our grate and go back into edit mode and select our faces. Oh, sorry. Go back out of edit mode, object, apply scale. All right, then go back into edit mode. And then hit A to select all of our faces and hit I. And since the last I function was to create insets for every single polygon, that's the last operation, that's where it leaves us. So I'm going to hit shift, and I'm just going to slide a little bit to make our grate like this. All right. Now, with the interior polygons or faces selected, I'm going to hit P and make that a new selection and I'm just gonna call this scrap 
just in case I need them later, all right? But they're a separate object. And now we have our, our grading for our fan, all right? Now let's go over to, let's get out of edit mode. And let's go ahead and apply a texture to that just so we can see it better. So I'm going to go to materials and see if I have something uh, kind of shiny-ish. There we go. That'll work for now. All right. So there's our fan grate. Now let's go to the hole. I'm not in edit mode, so let's go to the hole. And let's make this dark. Let's make that black. And let's move that up. GZ. Oh, it needs to be flipped. That's why needs to be flipped oh plus there's no face to it duh let me turn off the panels here all right so there's no face to that circle that's just the that's just the edges around the circle so let's go into edit mode edge select select all with the a and do an f for fill there we go now we have our black and then if i turn the panels back on I'll have some interference with the actual galvanized when we make this galvanized. All right, so I want to, I need to scale this just a tad. So we're going to hit S and we're going to hold our shift key and just scale it just so it's a little smaller than our grates. And then I'm going to G Z and just move that up till that interference goes away just like that so it looks like there's a, a hole all right now what we want to do is add our blades okay now I believe these have like three blades so let's take a look at our prototype may not be able to see it yeah it looks like there's three blades for our fan one two and three so we need to make a uh, fan blade. All right, so let's turn off our grate. And with that polygon select, um, with that face selected, all right, I'm getting out of edit mode. I'm going to shift to S and I'm going to move the cursor to that location. Okay, now I am going to go to top view. Maybe I'm trying to figure out how I want to make my fan blade. Let's go to top view. Tilde T for top. And I am going to... I'm going to play with... Um, I'm going to play with some vertices. So I'm going to shift A mesh single vert add a single vertice so now I have a vertice sitting right here oh wait a minute yeah there it is okay so we added a vertice all right turn on vertice so we can see it and let's call this uh, fan Blade. Okay. And zoom in a little bit. Now there's one vertice there, and I want to E to extrude it. And since I'm top down, I if I I I only have the X and Y, okay, not the Z. So I don't have to worry about it not being on the same plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click here and then I'm going to just hit a series of extrudes and it's not going to be perfect guys uh, we're just getting it kind of all right and I'm just going to hit E click E 
click E, click E, click E, click. All right. So I got that shape. And then I'm going to hit E, and we're going to kind of come back this way. It's going to be off center a little bit, but I'm not worried about that, the, de the amount of detail. And then these two last vertices, I'm just going to hit F and join those together. All right. Now we have a two-dimensional object here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select edge, hit A to select all of them, hit F to, well, I thought, oh yeah, it's there. Okay. I'm going to turn off our hole so I can see, yeah, there's, there's my face. All right. All right, so let me turn my the hole. Now I'm going to go to face select, select all with the A, G, Z, and we're just going to move that up a little bit so it's not interfering with our hole. Okay, then I'm going to go to vertices and we're going to take these vertices just one by one and G Z and move those up kind of like this G Z you can use proportional editing to do this too if you wanted to and we're just gonna kinda give our blade a little little pitch to it alright G Z just move that up just so our blade, I know it looks it looks like crap, you know, but you're going to be flying in an airplane, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, you're just giving the illusion of a fan in there. All right, now what I want to do is um, I'm going to tab out of edit mode. I'm going to hit save. And... At this location of our origin, I want to add Shift A and empty. And we're just going to do a an axis plane there. We, we're putting an empty. All right. Now I also believe I need to select this. No, nope, that's scale one. We're good. All right. So um, let's select our fan blade. And let's parent that to go to objects, go to parent, and let's. Yeah, I totally spaced it out. All right, remember how I parented the blade to the empty? Don't do that. Uh, yeah, sometimes I, we all know the the struggles we have right all right so with the blade all right so i do have my empty here and i have my fan blade all right so do not parent the fan blade to the empty that's where i screwed up all right so with the blade selected go to uh, your modifier add an array modifier and add three blades to it one two and three so that's count three change the relative to object offset and the object that you're offsetting that to is that empty that empty zero zero one all right but they're not parented all right the array of the blade is based on the empty they are not um parented now select the empty and rotate R Z and rotate that empty until you get three blades that are uh, equal distance from each other. Now, what is three? Well, that would be 135, right? Okay, so there, if you notice in the 
if you notice in the object properties you can see right here you can let me escape if you see right here the rotation if you type in 135 you'll get three equal spaced uh, blades all right so now we have our fan blades all right now obviously the fan blades are probably connected perfectly in the middle but I'm not trying to be that tight I could have done my fan blade a lot better than this all right but that's good enough for what we're doing so you can go to the modifier for the blades now and you can apply that and so now you can rotate the the empty or you can even select the empty and now oops sorry you can delete it okay you can delete the empty because you don't need it anymore all right because you only used it to create that uh, that radial um, array. All right, so now we have our fan blade. So let's turn on the grate and see what that looks like. All right, notice that my fan blade is actually sticking out, right? So what we're going to do is just do a simple scale, S, and just bring that in so it doesn't interfere with our with our grate all right and then you can give the blade some type of material so we're going to go to the materials and I got a whole bunch of uh, we're going to do this road this RD gray just so it's different okay um, you can look at your pictures and you can make it if you wanted to you can make it this you know that nice shiny aluminum or whatever if you wanted to okay but that gives us, I know it took me a long time to do this, but now you have uh, a, uh, an exhaust fan, all right? Now, let's go ahead and join these together. So take the hole and hold down your control, click the grate, click the blade, all those three are connected or selected and hit control J and now that is one unit and we can just simply rename this to uh, fan all right now we need four of them now that this is one object let's go to tilde T for top view and let's go into edit mode and hit a to select everything and shift D escape and then G, Y, and move that down like that. Okay? And then select A again for select everything. Control D, escape, and then G, whoops, G, X, and move those over to here. Okay? And then tab out of edit mode. Now we have our fans for our AC unit okay now that we have our fans in place now let's give our box some color and then we also need to put in the intake grill right here all right so let's give it a color so let's select our panels first and let's see if I have any colors in here I have a gray beige because that's kind of the color uh, of the unit if I bring up our now it looks gray gray in the picture but uh, a commercial air conditioning unit they're kind of a beige color uh, depending on the brand that you get this is I think this is a ream brand and they're usually kind of a beige gray all right so I have a beige gray so let's select that and see what that looks like so there's the color so if I select the color and let's look at the hex uh, Bravo 6 Alpha Echo 9 Charlie is the hex which is pretty darn close and then play with the metallic and the roughness to kind of get the shine right it's kind of a satinish look to it 
all right? But I think that color works just fine. Okay, now let's do some editing. Now, I could have I could have made this 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 pol this face um, if I was thinking ahead. Uh, I could have done this when I first made the box, but we're gonna make some edits to our framing, our seams, and our panels. So let's with our panels selected, let's go into edit mode and make sure that you have snap and edge active. Yep, I do. And we're going to do a couple loop cuts. Let me turn off x-ray. All right, we're going to make a couple loop cuts in these two here. First, I'm going to turn off snap and I'm going to uh, control R and make a loop cut on this face. Now I'm going to turn snap on and make a loop cut on this face, control R. And we're going to snap it even with that one. Then I'm going to turn snap off and I'm going to control R, create another loop cut. And we'll make that about right here. Then turn snap on and do a loop cut right here. And then make that even with that one. All right, now with the turn the face select, select these two faces here and hit P to make those a new object and make the name of that object intake, AC intake. All right, now let's get out of edit mode and go into select AC intake, go into edit mode, turn on vertices and let's, no, turn on faces, select all and now this is going to seem weird to you, but we are going to delete edges and faces only. That way we have our um, vertices. I'm going to select these two vertices, these four vertices in the middle, and we're going to go ahead and delete those. And then I'm going to select these four, and I'm going to hit F and create a face that goes all the way across. Okay. Now. Notice that we have this seam that runs down our right through our um, right through our our grate, right? Usually, what it's going to do is there's going to be a frame member coming across here and a frame member coming across here, and there's not going to be a frame going across uh, our grate. It's going to be open all the way across. So, what we're going to do is get out of edit mode go into our frame, hit tab, and I want my lines to show up, okay, like that. So we're going to go to wire mode, all right, and with our, with our frame selected, I am going to go to edge select, no, well, it doesn't matter. You can do this. All right, it doesn't matter. We're just going to split this frame right here. So we're going to control R, put a loop cut, and make sure your snapping edges are on. Click, and then snap even with that line right there. See, we have snap on. So I'm going to control R, click, and then just make it even with that one. All right. Now, we got something, oh, the reason that it's shaped like this is because this is shaped like this at the top, and this is flat. Um, so if you want this vertice right here, okay, if you want this vertice to be straight across, all you need to do is select one of these vertices, shift S, move the cursor to selected, come up to the transform formation and select 3d cursor select the cursor that's not at the same level and do a shift z zero and that drops it even with where the 3d cursor is all right so that's how you take care of that problem now let's sh select faces and select these two faces oh I, I hope i didn't get those ones in the back no i didn't good all right, so we have that face, these faces right here selected, and we're going to hit delete faces. 
There might be, is there one more? Let me turn off intake, see if there's one hidden behind. Nope, there isn't. We're good. All right, so let's turn on intake back and let's turn on vertices. Select these vertices, hit F, put a face on the end. And the same up here, select those, put a face on the end there. Then we can change our transformation back to median point. So now we've broken, we've broken our frame at, at the location of our intake. Now we want to put a framing member coming across here and across here. Now different ways you can do that is um, we are going to do a loop cut on this. And we're going to make that even with this line. And then we're going to do another loop cut right here and make that even with this line. I'm not worried about this being uh, not this vertice not being at the same level here because we're only going to use this face right here. So I'm going to do another loop cut on this piece and I'm going to slide that up to here even with the bottom and I'm going to drop that down. Um, a little bit so I'm gonna GZ 0 0.08 whoops 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 so why is that going in the wrong direction oh I didn't do the minus that's why so let's do a control R click move this up snap it to this to this loop cut and then we're gonna GZ minus 0 0.08 Eight. there we go and then we're going to do the same thing up here except it's not going to be minus control R click drop that down there let it snap G Z point zero eight so we have two polygons that are uh, an inch inch wide now we're going to select face select this face select this face and we're going to extrude those all the way to this edge right over here so E and then snap to this edge alright now we can um, we can how do I want no I don't want to do that yes I do want to do that yes I do all right, so let's do a loop cut here. So let's do a control R loop cut down here. Click, snap that to that bottom line. Just like that. I think that worked. Did it? No. G, Z, snap it to this line here. All right. And then do the same to the top let's do a control R click and drag that down till it meets this line here then let's turn on x-ray mode and faces and select these no that's not what I want to do let me zoom in here because I got a Okay, so I have a face here, a face, here. nope, that's not the one I want, control, this one, this one, there we go, I want those, and I also want this bottom one, and hit delete faces, okay, I'm not worried about those, I can show you how to change that too, but there's a, you know, this, this frame's going into this frame, but that's okay. Now let's uh, drop down to this bottom one and get rid of these polygons here. Shift, select that, select that one, select that one, select, whoops, we don't want that one, we want that one. Okay, and delete those faces. There we go. And then we turn off x ray mode. And then you just created a frame around our um, grate, right?
Now, what I want to do is I want to get out of edit mode and select our intake. Okay. And I want to shift D to copy that. Escape so I don't move it. P. Oh. Oh, I'm in edit mode. All right. Now, with the second one, we're going to call this one intake grill. Okay. And then we're going to select intake grill. Go back into edit mode. And we are going to move this out. Okay. So we're going to move it in the X direction. No, Y direction. Which direction is that? That's the Y direction. So we're going to... I'm going to turn snapping off and we're going to G Y hold down my shift key and just move that out just a little bit like that. All right. Now let's go back to our intake. Oh, get out of edit mode. Go to our intake and let's get rid of the beige color and make that a black color. Now you can't see it obviously because it's behind our other our grill, right? So let's select our grill. Oops. Select our grill. Okay, that's black. That's right. All right. And let's get rid of the beige gray. And let's select our uh, shiny frames. All right. And let's go into edit mode. Tab into edit mode and subdivide. And we are going to create right. I right click, did subdivide, and then in the number of cuts, we're going to increase that until we're satisfied. And I think that's good enough. I did nine cuts. Whoops. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so I have our grate there. All right. Then we are going to, I'm going to tab out to see if my scale is still good. Yep, scale is one. All right, now remember the inset. So with all of these polygons selected, I hit I. I think the last op op operation was all individual polygons. So we're just going to kind of make this grate look like this. And then we're just going to go ahead and delete those selected faces. And now we have our intake grill set up. And it's set out and we have black on the inside. Okay. And then the last little touch, well, not the last little touch, is we can select our, let's get out of edit mode, select our frame. All right, now I could make this that beige gray. And so it would look like this, but you know, it doesn't stand out that much, okay? But we can make it stand out by making a copy of this beige gray, hit the two to make that an orphan. And let's um Rename this to DK for darker. All right. And let's just go into the base color and bring down the darkness just a little bit. Just so there's enough difference of it. And then click out. And then there you have this AC unit like this. Now I believe that over here on this face, let's go into edit mode of this face and let's just put a couple loop cuts. Click here and click there and then just do another control and so you have a new face right here and let's select this face and let's just extrude that out a little bit.
and let's add a bevel to the end so do edge select and let's select this edge and let's just give it a little curve this might be induction here so we're gonna with that edge select right bevel edge okay that's that's more of a chamfer right so I'm going to use my scroll wheel add some divisions to it and then we can bring that down and I'm scroll wheeling to add some divisions to this all right to make it smoother and that's enough there click and then get out of edit mode and kind of looks like that now if uh, if your air conditioning unit has some labels and stuff on it you can download some images and put a, put some decals on here that says maybe the brand name or something like that um, but yeah that's uh, that's how I do an AC unit um, my next step is for this project is I'm gonna uh, I'll probably take this section of the unit make a copy of this unit delete everything except for the where the four fans are and then remove two of the fans and make that a copy and copy that object to here for this one so I don't have to recreate um, and then probably the same for maybe this one you know you can use you can use pieces of what you just created and use your imagination to to make the different units okay so I won't bore you with that but we made an AC unit now here's the cool thing if you wanted to I don't know if you really would want to but you can take this this fan blade and you can with that empty there and you can animate that fan blade spinning if you wanted to and then write that out and um, there are effects that you can add in and those guys that you guys do a lot of the effects with your aircrafts and stuff uh, you can play around with it but you can get effects for you know some steam or something coming up so you can do that kind of stuff but I'm not going to do that in this video all right, so we made an air conditioning unit, and I'm just going to continue on and add units and put some of the piping and stuff that's on the roof. And I got a couple of roof vents, like these round vents. I'm going to add those to it. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you found something useful in this video to use in yours. And if you guys do an animated version with some mist coming off of your unit, hey, uh, record that and you know put that you know somewhere put it on one of the scenery um, sites um, my my um, my group is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 SDK in scenery and there is uh, another group um, uh, that Jan Lammers, Lammers has created, and that is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, World uh, Developers Worldwide. Those are two scenery groups that you can join. Uh, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you inclined to support me, buymeacoffee.com slash myphysicalworld. I hope you learned something. And I will see you guys on the next video. See you guys later.